and welcome to World Inside with Me Tian Wei. The program is coming to you on CGTN from Beijing. Britain is rolling out the red carpet for U.S. President Donald Trump. His three-day state visit will involve meeting the Queen, Prime Minister Theresa May, and a ceremony in the Portsmouth to mark the 75th anniversary of the D-Day landing. The White House previously hailed the visit as an opportunity to reaffirm the steadfast relationship between the two countries. But unlike former U.S. President Barack Obama, Mr. Trump has not been asked to address the Houses of Parliament. So what does this mean? How will the meeting affect Britain's political future at a critical time when Mrs. May just announced her resignation? And what does this mean for Washington? Will the traditional ally still there? Protesters turned out in their thousands the last time the U.S. president visited Britain. Something similar anticipated by critics this time round. Even the Trump blimp taking to the air once again. As the president's travels rarely touch the ground on his 2018 stopover, it's thought he missed most of that. While he is said to have loved Britain's famous pomp and ceremony, they expect government ministers to be on the edge of their seats nonetheless. He's a controversialist. He's uh, unorthodox. Um, and so he has some uh, virulent opponents. He's also got some supporters. And of course the affection for the United States as a country transcends the fact that it is just the president who is coming. Already the president has taken sides in Britain's election for a new leader once Prime Minister Theresa May leaves Downing Street next Friday. Talking up Brexit hardliner Nigel Farage and the lead candidate for the Prime Minister's position, former Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson. Nigel Farage is a friend of mine, Boris is a friend of mine. They're two very good guys, very interesting people. Pressing Britain on its relationship with Huawei could be another controversy. The British considering the Chinese communications giant for a non-core role in its plans for 5G and President Trump banning it in the US as a security risk. So what's the word on Mr. Trump's visit to the UK? We are joined by Professor Ian Beck in London. He's a professor at the European Institute and co-director of the Darendorf Forum of the London School of Economics and Political Science. In Washington, D.C., we invited even Ivan Eland, rather, a senior fellow at the director of the Center on Peace and Liberty at the Independent Institute. Last but not least, in our Beijing studio, Cui Hongjian, the director of the Department of European Studies at the China Institute of International Studies. Gentlemen, welcome to our program. Professor Beck, I want to go to you right. first. What is the real essence of this visit by President Trump? How much do you think London would welcome all those suggestions and gestures? Well, I think it, it's a full state visit, which is a, a different phenomenon from the one that Trump had a couple of years ago when he was just on a, an ordinary visit to the UK. This will be all the pomp of a president meeting Britain's head of state, the Queen being, being welcomed at Buckingham Palace and so on. I think it's worth stressing as well that such visits once in a presidency might be becoming relatively normal. It's a, 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 a time at which they'll discuss major issues of international concern, security, trade developments, maybe even reflecting on the way in which the relationship between the UK and the US evolve after Brexit. Therefore, many people would ask that question, Mr. Yeland, really how much can be achieved as a result of all the changes mentioned by Professor Beck? After all, these are only a few days before the Prime Minister goes away. Yes, well, she is a lame duck, so she has ba ba basically very little power, and so they can discuss these things, and I'm sure th there'll be some uh, productive discussions, but she is hampered uh, by that. And, uh, you know, we also have the possibility that Britain may stumble out of the uh, EU with no uh, agreement, uh, so that will increase their dependence on trade deals with the U.S., and I'm sure that given Trump's view of allies uh, mooching off the U.S. Uh, and taking advantage of our uh, security umbrella but not giving us much back, 
he will use his negotiating leverage uh, to get more out of the UK because they'll be desperate to get uh, foreign foreign trade deals. Of mm -hmm. course, Britain will also be more desperate to uh, negotiate with China. Uh, Brexit, uh, stumbling out of Brexit, is, or go getting out of Brexit is, I think, going to uh, raise more conflict uh, than it will solve. Mm. Professor Bagg, what about that? I mean, uh, UK now at its critical juncture of its own, which is uh, facing the prospect of uh, Brexit. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Britain wants to play both hands. At least that was the original thought. You know, both have links to China and also to the United States. Well, the transatlantic partnership and allies nature have also been evolving. So, Professor Begg, how well will Britain be able to balance all of these latest developments? Well, Britain's in a mess because of the disarray around Brexit. I don't think, in spite of everything you, you read and hear about in the British political system, there will be no deal with the European Union. That's mentioned repeatedly, but there's, there's, a, there's still a majority in the House of Commons to oppose it, and that majority will, in my judgment, prevail. That said, the, the UK will be looking around the rest of the world saying, where can we do business in future? The US is already Britain's biggest trading partner. And although Trump has uh, dangled the possibility of a new trade deal with the, the UK, I doubt there is that much more intensity to that trade deal that, that can substitute for leaving the European Union. On the other hand, Britain trades relatively little with China and sees China and other emerging markets in, in East Asia as being the, the opportunity of Brexit. Now, there's still the residual question of whether Brexit happens as currently planned. That right. always is going to hang over these discussions. Right. But Britain will be looking round the rest of the world trying to improve its position. Mm. Mr. Tsui, of course, there are several layers going on right here. China always wants to have a very united Europe because China wants to deal with the potential of a regionalized Europe while at the same time developing ties with the individual countries. But at the same time now, China-U.S. trade negotiations, as Mr. Yiland beautifully put. So uh, how much do you think China is looking at this visit? I think that uh, it will be more uh, symbolic uh, event also you know because of the situation of uh, Prime Minister May and also because of the uh, Brexit because we know the one of the big uh, uh, questions listed from the uh, uh, Brexit uh, towards the uh, uh, transatlantic relations especially the UK US relations is UK is losing its uh, special uh, I mean function as a bridge between the Atlantic and say but of course I think from China's perspective uh, to, give, to have some more uh, trade and have some more yes. uh, economic cooperation with the UK, no matter uh, Brexit or not, I think it will be a very, very big concern. But of mm. course, regarding to the trade issue, I think so far uh, China tried to also uh, cooperate with um, uh, UK and the European countries uh, more and more and to uphold a kind of a multilateral cooperation I will see. be a very, very uh, uh, important principle for the trade itself. Uh, Professor Begg, um, you know, one of the pillars of the British diplomacy, at least since the Second World War, has a lot to do with its ally relationship with the United States. Uh, even at very challenging and, shall we say, controversial times, for example, the war in Iraq and Afghanistan, mm. uh, which, of course, the Prime Minister then suffered a lot, eventually in his so-called political legacy. So, Professor Begg, how much do you think uh, the politicians now in the UK will reflect upon the real nature of the relationship now, particularly you have a generation of politicians uh, in which, uh, you know, looking inward uh, seems to be bigger of a trend than it used to be, even though it is still not the majority? Well, I, th I think you're right to identify this dilemma for, for British politics, which has been there since even before the Second World War. The transatlantic relationship has been uh, one of the key pillars of British diplomacy, British international relations. And I think it's wor maybe worth making the point that it's, it's often a mistake to say Trump equals the United States. There are, there are far deeper ties than just with the Trump administration, which Britain will be keen to nurture in future. Mm -hmm. They include the security establishment, which 
as we know, has been, been very often at odds with what Trump has been trying to do globally. So that, that is a, a central pillar of, of British diplomacy. But Britain also has to reflect the fact that it's geographically close to Europe. The gravitational pull of Europe, both in economic terms and in diplomatic and other terms, is, mm. is not going to go away as a significant element in, in the British attitude to the world. Mm. So riding that horse in two directions is going to be a very difficult task, especially with the confusion around Brexit. Mm. Mr. Tsui, do you think uh, President Trump, obviously he's making the trip to the UK now, uh, in a way to show that he will have an influence on the very influential European country as he sees it, and to even certain extent uh, to divide and conquer in a way when it comes to how the European capitals are making their decisions. While at the same time, one shouldn't dismiss the fact that there might be a tempting uh, gesture to surprise or to impress China that Washington and London could also walk very close despite mm. of the latest uh, shall I say, exchange of rhetorics and the words between the two capitals. So what do you think, uh, Professor, uh, how will these kind of gestures be able to put the two countries together, uh, whether so-called ideology, uh, but ideology about what mm -hmm. uh, will bring these two capitals together or apart? Yes, certainly. I think this time the uh, visit by Mr. Trump to uh, London uh, there will be also a requirement from Washington towards the uh, London is to show, just like you mentioned, that uh, still uh, uh, Mr. Trump could find a destination in Europe because we know uh, after uh, uh, Mr. Trump had you know, worse and worse uh, relations with uh, uh, Chancellor Merkel, with President Macron, so now it's difficult even for the uh, Mr. Trump to find that a destination of visit in European, I mean, especially continental Europe. So I think it's important for Washington to show the world that, okay, we, we, we do have the allies in uh, Europe. But of course, uh, I, uh, I agree with the uh, American guests that uh, perhaps the China will become uh, uh, one of the issues for this visit by Mr. Trump. And not only because of the tweet, but of course now I think the uh, problem for Britain is Britain try to reshape its um, diplomatic policy and its uh, global uh, 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 vision. One of the most important things that uh, Britain want to develop its uh, trade relations investment with China, both with the United States. Yeah. But another question is once, once the uh, UK and the uh, US still have some uh, I mean common grounds or common value, but I doubt that, uh, what, what it is. It seems that you're confirming my question, which is there is a question over there. Let's go to <laughs> Professor Beck over there. Exactly. Is there an answer to these questions? Well, Britain is casting around. Where, where does it go in future? And it's also worth recalling that the, 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 the initial reason for Trump coming on the state visit was associated with something that's just a couple of days away, which is the the celebration or the marking of the 75th anniversary of the D-Day landings in Normandy, which was, after all, one of the most uh, extreme examples of uh, US collaboration with the UK in fighting uh, the, the tyranny of Nazi Germany. So it's, it's that context which provides some of the, the pretext for the negotiations or discussions that are going to take place. Britain looking to say, are we going back 75 years and moving forward for the next 75 years of collaboration? I don't think it's deeply ideological the way it's going. It's much more about ceremony and uh, mm. trying to get the social relations between the potential new British leadership and, and the U.S. administration, let me, let as me well as thinking how do the dominoes way. fall? Yeah, let me just put it in a very blunt way, Professor Beck. Uh, you're very good at answering my blunt questions. For example, what is the I'll biggest try. British national interest when it comes to trade and economic ties? What does London want to achieve despite of all these turmoil in the internal politics? You do want to have a better economy so that there will be less crisis back at home. So what are the biggest national interests, Professor Begg, and who are here to build those interests uh, for the best partners? I'm not let you to choose between China and the United States. I'm just trying to get an honest answer from a British yes. perspective, Professor Begg. 
I think it's, it's very straightforward. The, <laughs> the, the, the initiatives, the incentives are to create an environment in which the British economy can prosper. Mm. If Britain is fully outside the EU, whatever deal emerges as a result of that, then it has to look to other parts of the world to recreate alternative relationships. It's concerned about where investment's coming from. It's concerned about its uh, engagement in technology networks and being able to, to deal with the, the challenges of everything from climate change to the, the terrorist threats that are coming from different parts of the world. So all of these things go into this, yeah. rather, I think, than any explicit ideology. Mm. Uh, Mr. Eland, uh, on those notes given by our British professor, uh, any of those are shared by Washington now, particularly by the current administration? Well, I think, um, you know, they're just waiting to see what internal developments uh, happen in Britain, whether you do get an agreement or whether there's no agreement with the EU. And I think Britain is going to be in a vulnerable position either way. It's going to be more vulnerable if it doesn't get an agreement, but even if it does get an agreement, I think, uh, you know, Britain is going to be casting around for other relationships, mm. and I'm sure that Donald Trump is going to use that. He plays hardball, uh, as the Chinese know, on these um, trade agreements. Now, whether he could, he, he's competent enough to win and, uh, and doing that is another story, but that's, that's what he does, and so I think also there's going to be uh, a lot of tension with Britain over uh, China if uh, Britain really does want to open up uh, more trade relations with China, which it seems to, and I think which is going to have to. So I think that's yeah. going to be a major uh, contention. Of course, you also have the problem that the British and the U.S. have been at odds over the climate change agreement, the U.S. With, uh, withdrawal from that, uh, the Middle East peace. Uh, process and the most importantly, I think the Iran nuclear deal, which which was a mistake to, uh, by the U.S. to get out of that, but uh, it's still a, a sore spot. Those three areas also are contentious uh, between the U.S. and um, yeah. Britain. And of course, uh, you know, you you'll see smiles at this uh, this state visit, and it's all well and good to have uh, cannons going off and um, people sure. in military uniforms marching around. The pageantry <laughs> will certainly be great, uh, but the, the underlying problem is that, uh, uh, you know, the British uh, system is in turmoil, and so, and I would argue so is the American mm. system to some extent. So, um, so it, you know, it's, so it's almost like a competition, I if I could things. help you to conclude, uh, that uh, a competition of who's more vulnerable. Uh, uh, Professor Tui, also in Beijing, you see, hardball being played. You see so-called a sharp power being exercised and exerted. And now there's a competition about who is the most vulnerable, who will blink first and blink on what price. So, uh, Mr. Tsui, uh, from the topic today toward, uh, you know, international trade, toward the multilateral frameworks on different areas, what are you looking at for this specific trip? What kind of hints will it eventually give us? Uh, I believe that this uh, with it, uh, indeed, uh, there will be, I mean, few uh, practical, I mean, out uh, outcomes or some uh, so-called uh, achievements. Okay. Because so far you can find uh, less and less, I mean, common grounds or common uh, uh, stands between uh, uh, Britain and the United States. Uh, maybe now, yes, there will be, there will, there are some. Uh, a requirement with each other, just like we mentioned before that uh, the FTA agreement after the Brexit will be the biggest requirement so far from uh, London to uh, Washington. And also to show uh, uh, a kind of alliance so far, especially in the current situation uh, from uh, uh, Washington will be a biggest uh, requirement. But uh, now uh, I think for a long term situation, uh, not okay. only because of the Brexit and also not only because uh, because of the so-called unilateral behaviors by uh, Washington. I think now it's time for Britain and the U.S. to rethink and to reshape their relationship. Well, no you matter think, it well, we'll see whether they think or not. Uh, before we go very briefly from our two guests, uh, uh, Professor Beck, a final word. Well, a final word is that Trump in some ways is quite childish. He probably thinks it's great that he should be visiting the Queen because his mother was a great fan of the Queen. He likes to present his family to the Queen. 
So I, I would read less into the political significance of this visit than the pageantry. I see. Well, Mr. Eland, final words. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that to some extent. I think that the, you know, the British government is a lame duck, and we don't know what's going to happen with Brexit. So the, the, the relationship, the actual relationship, other than the pageantry, is sort of on hold until mm -hmm. see, we see what goes on. But I think the U.S. probably has a stronger hand than, than Britain does because Britain's policy is in utter turmoil uh, with the EU, and uh, that seems to be driving everything in British politics All at the right. current time. Ivan Eland, Ian Begg, Cui Hongjian, thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thank you.